6th graders. I am excited to do art with you today. We're combining your lesson because we have our desert tortoise that we're going to draw. And so you need a writing utensil and a piece of paper. And the reason we are doing this with both grades is because in fourth grade, you talk about um, animals that are native to Utah and how they adapt to their environment. And in sixth grade, one of your science standards is about how matter and energy are transferred between living and non-living things in an ecosystem. And so I decided to choose the desert tortoise since we're drawing it with the fourth graders and we can talk about some of the things that they eat and how energy is transferred through that ecosystem a little bit. So we will get started with our tortoise. And this will be uh, fun because it has lots of detail. So we'll start here with the, sh the top or the back of the shell. And our desert tortoise is the main thing we're drawing on our page. So this can take up most of the page. So I want you to think before you draw this line, especially if you're using pen like me, um, so that you don't have to erase. So I'm gonna start about here in the middle between the top and the bottom, about the middle of my paper, a little ways in from the side, and I'm going to draw a line over and down. Oh, looks like my pen didn't draw that one. There we go. Okay, it seems like a simple line, but it's important because this is where the shell's coming from and everything comes off of this line. Okay, so then the next line we're going to do is we're going to take the bot the um where we just stopped. We're gonna curve around the bottom and then go across. Um so we've kind of curved down here and then we'll start curving back up about halfway across the shell. So we'll curve up and watch this part we stop. When there's a little space left, and that's where we're going to kind of make it so it went in and back out to the edge. And you can see that when I stopped here, it kind of made a little divot, and that's okay. I didn't mean for it to do that, but it's going to be fine. I can always go back and kind of smooth my line out if I need to. Okay, so here's the shape of my shell. now. I'm going to come up here because I know you probably want to see where the head is and how this all fits together. So let's go ahead and do that. Right where this little divot was where, where the two lines came together at a point here, you're going to come down at an angle, just a little ways, and then come down again and you're going to do the same thing here. And that's the neck and then we're going to come down again at a little angle out past the shell and then kind of curve off. Okay, this is the head we're making. And then from the other side of the neck, you're going to actually curve the other way. So this side of the head, from the neck, the head goes out and out. And then you're going to bring it across till it connects. All right, and then we're going to take the, just from, this is kind of the point of the, the turtle's face. We come down a little ways and do a little curve line across. There's kind of the bottom of the mouth. And then we'll go back in here. While we're in the head, we can go ahead and do the eye. So we're gonna do a, an angled line and then we're going to curve over the top and then we're going to also curve under and then inside the eye we have this little curved line so let me hold that closer there's our turtle eye okay and then on this side we're going to do another little on the top another little curve for the other eye. 
Okay, now let's take this. See how there's space right here next to the head in the shell? That's where we're going to put the arm, one of the arms. It's going to come from under. See how I went in a little bit? In from the shell, it comes straight out and then curves down about as far as that tip of the face. And then it's going to curve down and back in. Okay, and this arm has, I'm going to put three claws on it. And I looked at a picture from the Hogel Zoo, I believe, when I was uh, finding this image. So it's kind of fun to, to see an animal from nearby. Okay, for the other arm, we're going to come be find, find the point of the neck here and go back about the same width as this arm, maybe a little further because it's um, coming out to the side. We're going to go angle back and can decide about how long that arm is. Remember when something's in front, it can appear wider and longer than the other, even if they're the same. So that's why I brought it down a little farther. And then I'm going to go across and connect back up at by where that the neck and head were. Okay, and then I'm going to put on this hand, I think I can see four claws. So maybe there's just one hidden back here, which is possible when it's far away. And then we're going to move to um, the back here for one of the back legs that's showing. So near the end of the shell, come in a little ways, and we're going to come down, curve, and back up. And right here we have three claws. One, two, three. <clears throat> okay, so this is what I got out of when I looked at the picture. Now this is uh, one of my favorite parts, the shell. So I've always thought turtle shells were so cool because they have so many details. We're going to start at the back of the shell and we're going to come a little bit up and then curve down, across, over, 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 up, and across like that. So hopefully you can see that. Okay, now we're going to come near the top. Um, where the back of the shell kind of comes up to a point, uh, not a point, but a, a higher place here, we're going to start coming down. And we're, this line is not parallel to the, the edge of the shell. It's actually going to come down and get wider, wider away from the shell as it goes until it ends right about in that middle point where our lines went up at a point. Okay. So this is the middle of the shell, but because it's round shape, we're only going to see it as it goes over the back and disappears. And then we have, um, let's do our cross lines. We're going to do two big cross lines. So this first one is going to start um, near the front of the foot, and I'm just starting it on the inside line we made. And same idea, it's going to, this one is going to kind of parallel the edge of the shell, but then it's going to round off the top and disappear. Okay, and then the next one, and this is not exact, I mean, it. I think it will look cool no matter what you do. This one's a little different than the one I did when I um, did it before this video, when I practiced, so this, it's okay, however your lines turn out. It will it will still look cool okay and then we have our next one is a little bit back from the from this leg and we have um, we're going to bring it up over and curve it across like this okay now um, this part is really fun too we're going to have in the background we're going to have some or inside these shapes, we're going to have some shapes that just echo what you see 
in the shape and it gets smaller and smaller. This is my favorite part. Okay. So we'll do this. Okay. We've got some different patterns and shapes that it makes. What's neat about the turtle shell and why I like it is because you can draw it and even if you don't draw it exactly the way that it looks in a photograph or the way that it looks in another person's drawing, it still looks cool. It just, because there's such natural lines, it, it still looks authentic. So I, I think that's fun to draw things like that. Um, for these three legs, now we're going to add some scales. And same thing, this is kind of fun because it's a fun thing to add. No matter how you do it, it will it will look realistic. You don't have to put the scales in exactly a certain spot. So what I'm doing is just doing like a U shape and then kind of alternating. So here's the U and then I'll come into the middle of the next U to do the next one. The next row will come in the middle of the U. So they're kind of alternating, but even if you did them in a straight row, um, coming down like this, if you just went down, that would also work. So again, there's not really a right or wrong way to do this. It will turn out well either way. And another thing I just love about drawing something like an animal in nature or really just almost anything in nature is that if you make a mistake and you make something uneven or wiggly, usually it ends up looking fine or even better or more realistic because that's how things are in nature. They're not always perfect and I mean if you think about like a tree or your hand or any kind of natural line usually it is not perfectly straight or symmetrical your face anything like that usually there's there are things about it that are wiggly or bigger or smaller and it's just how it is so it's fun to draw that because it takes some of the pressure off okay so then we have this is our desert tortoise and so of course it's in the desert it's not out swimming in the ocean I'm going to put my um, ground line in here above the tortoise because I, I kind of want to show that it's on the ground and I'm looking at it down here um, I mean, kind of this way, but still in this enclosed area. Maybe I'm picturing it in the zoo, but you can picture it wherever you want it to be. And then I read about some of the things that the desert tortoise eats because we needed to talk about and think about the how the energy is transferred. So, of course, the, the sun is helping grow the plants and the tortoise is eating the plants. And, you know, as it goes around its day, it interacts with its environment. And so... Um, some of the things that the desert tortoise eats are leafy greens, grasses, um, so it talked about um, maybe some vegetables or fruits. I don't know if that's as much in the wild, but that's part of the diet um, maybe at the zoo. But we can definitely draw some long grasses here, or short grasses, whatever kind. And if you have more information about the desert tortoise and its diet, or if you want to look it up, um, you can add that information to what I'm giving you here. So you can make, um, do a little research on that if you want to know a little bit more. I'm going to put some little grass up here. I just love how um, 
how beautiful deserts can be. So, of course, living in Utah, sometimes I go down to southern Utah where you can see it even more, more of a sandy desert. And it's so, it's so cool to see how the um, things will be dry, but there's still a few things growing. It's such a neat thing to see. Okay, so um, here's my desert tortoise. Now, I'm going to spend some time coloring mine with you. So I'll stop here with the details, but if you'd like to, especially if you'd like thinking about southern Utah or even northern Utah, if you'd like to add in some mountains or rocks in the background, um, you know, I'm just going to add a rock here too. I just think it adds some interest to the picture when we put some details like this. So I'm going to put a couple rocks before I color and just... You, I want you to picture what you think of um, with the desert tortoise. Okay, so I'll go ahead and sign my name. Um, my picture is backwards from yours, so sign it in the bottom right corner. I know mine looks um, like it's in the left. And it, it, that's another great thing. That this picture doesn't matter if you drew it. Hopefully you were just following me. Um, just the name will be the only thing that's different. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll get my copy made for the students picking these up at school. And then and then we'll do some coloring. If you have any coloring supplies at home, this is the time to get them. Uh, I've talked about this before, but if it doesn't matter what kind of supplies they are. Today, I'm going to use marker. I'm going to try to use a few different kinds in my videos so you can just see some options. Um, but if you want to choose a different medium today, that's fine. I, I have done this same drawing in um, oil pastel. I, I colored it in oil pastel, and that was really fun. So if, if you wanted to try that, you could do it, um, really whatever you want. If you don't have something to color with, then it's totally fine to just use um, your, your pen or pencil to go through and add even more detail. You could shade it, um, add texture to the ground anything like that. And I actually wanted to get out that one that I show you, the one with um, oil pastel, and also show you because um, the colors here are okay. I actually found another one, but we'll save that one. So here's, here's a picture of kind of the colors and so I'm using marker today I don't have these colors so if you want to use these colors you can or if you want to uh, be creative with me and use markers you can do that too so basically what you saw in the in this picture is that the colors are going with the environment and so part of the animals adaptations um, in a desert would be to look like their surroundings for protection. So even though I don't have those exact colors, I'm going to use desert colors to color in my tortoise. Again, as you know, I like to do some creative coloring. And so if, um, if mine is not looking exactly like a real desert tortoise, I'm okay with that because I've drawn it. I Kind of get the idea but now I can have fun and do a little bit of design as I color it in and remember you know you can um, you can turn this off and just color on your own or you can skip to the end if you want to just see what how mine turned out because these are art everyone can do their own work of art here so if you're done with instructions, then that's great. Or if you'd like to keep it on, that's great too. Okay. 
So I'm going to do brown, green, and orange probably. That's what I'm thinking. And um, I'll probably vary the pattern. One thing that I like to do is uh, if I don't have a certain color, sometimes I'll put two colors or three colors next to each other so that when you hold it back, overall you just get an impression of a certain color or color scheme. And it's not, it's not exactly about what color things are, but it's more about the combination. So that's what I'm doing right now with my markers. Because I know that they won't really blend very well. They won't, can't layer markers very easily. At least not these ones. Usually they kind of retain their own color. So adding some yellow in too. Another desert color. chosen a pattern so I'm going um, in order just to keep track of my colors so I did yellow um, first this time and now I'll follow the pattern orange green brown and I'll change it um, which one starts on the next part of the shell It looks like this, um, this one, this little square of the shell, I did an extra, um, did an extra little loop inside, which is fine. I'm telling you that just to tell you that it's okay if you had different numbers on your squares. It's okay with me. All right, so I did orange, and then I started with yellow. So I'll go backwards, I'll do brown next, just for fun. And the fun thing about these videos is if you do one and then you want to do another one a different way, you can watch it again and, and get another piece of paper and but I would encourage you, once you start one, to finish the whole thing. Because I, I feel like there's something good about not worrying too much about making it perfect and sticking with one piece of paper the whole time just to see how it turns out. Um, and then even if it turns out that you didn't like it, that is still valuable because then you learned what about it was something you don't like and next time when you do it you won't um, you won't do that again but it's good you wouldn't know that unless you could actually finish it and see how it turned out so I, I really like doing these videos with you right now because that's what I'm doing as I go along sometimes I try something and then I'm thinking hmm I don't know if I would do that, color that that way next time or something, but it's it's okay. It's If I stick with it, keep adding things, it will turn out okay. All right. Brown. Another way you could do this coloring is you could just choose when you have the yellow out or whichever color, you just go ahead and color all the yellow things that you want to color and then move on to your next color. I, I like to color like that usually, but this time I'm just going to go step by step. Okay, so I got through all my colors, orange, yellow, purple, I mean brown, green, back to orange here. 
change first. So this pattern is going to match this one. So my I'd love to see what you come up with for yours. If you use different media, medium, or whatever you decide to do. Use markers, but a different pattern. I'm sure you'll do a great job. Okay, now I'm gonna choose a color for the head. I'm going to choose brown, just so that I've got this idea of camouflage going on, because we know I have my desert tortoise. I'm trying to make make sure it would survive in the desert. And then I have um, the mouth there, the bottom, and then the eyes. I'll do the eyelids a different color so that I can see them. So I'll do orange just so it stands out. It's close to brown, but it's um, a different color. Okay, let's do some. How about green eyes? Okay, I'm gonna do green and yellow on my eyes. <clears throat> I'd like to make the the legs um, multicolored too, and I'm going to do it the way I was telling you before, where I'll do I'll choose one color to start with, and I'll just go ahead and fill in all the yellows that I want to fill in first. So I am just choosing random scales to color in yellow, and I'm doing it random so that it will help the tortoise look more natural. A lot of times that's how, like we were talking about before, the nature looks a little random. Okay, and then we'll go with another color. Do green. And um, Again, it, it could be fun for you to look up an actual picture, a photograph of this animal so that you could see what colors you see in it when you look at it. There could be um, more than one coloring of, you know, in, in real life, these tortoises, maybe they don't all look exactly the same as each other. So you could search and see if there are, are a few different pictures of them. I even did uh, two greens next to each other because they were really random. <clears throat> okay. And then get a lot of orange and brown in here. One thing that's cool about the way this animal looks is that the the different textures just naturally make it so that you can tell which part is which. Um, with coloring, sometimes when you're coloring something and uh, they're right next to each other, if you use the same colors, then you can't tell which part is which. But with this tortoise, even though the shell and the legs are the same colors, You'll be able to really separate them because they have such different patterns and they're natural patterns. It's so cool. Okay, and then I'm, I've got a bunch of scales left. I'm just going to use brown for all the rest of them, even though that will be a little more than the other colors. I'm okay with that. I've talked about using music before too. That could be a great thing to to put on, especially if you are 
I'm going to spend a bunch of time on this. It can be relaxing and um, I really like to do that a lot of the time. And sometimes it's nice to have quiet too and so or maybe you like hearing what I'm saying and <laughs> talking to you. So whatever works the best for you at home, you can do that. This is how it's looking. It looks kind of like candy. It looks like colorful chocolate bar wrapper. <clears throat> Okay, and then I'll choose a color for my claws. Um, I think I'll use brown. I've got a lot of brown on this, but I'm trying to show that it's blending in. And uh, usually I'll, I will, in class, I'll usually have it quiet and have music playing while you're working on something like this so that you can focus. But I'm using this time with these videos to talk through my process of what I'm thinking, just so that you have a chance to maybe think about some other things while you're working, um, since we don't have a full class of students and hopefully it's not distracting. But hopefully it's more <clears throat> of a chance to think out loud and see what what ideas go through your mind or my mind and what how they're the same or different and you can learn from that process. I, I took a class um, from an artist recently and it was really fun to hear um, because it was a small class and she could she could have everyone be quiet and say what she was thinking while she worked and we had a lot of fun hearing her explain what she was doing and then I got to choose oh I like that or oh I would do that part differently and I really I thought that was a neat experience so hopefully that's what it is for you if not you can turn it off <laughs> or, or turn it on mute so you can have some quiet whatever works for you Great. All right, I'm gonna get some green grass in here. Could do some yellow grass too. Sometimes it's yellow. Yeah, I'm gonna save my yellow for the the ground and make it kind of a sandy ground. yellow ground in. I saved my ground for last with marker. Um, you could, you know, a lot of times you'll do it one thing if you're using one medium and then if you do a different medium it makes sense to do it the complete opposite way. So with marker there are different tips and tricks I saved the ground for last because it's so big and with marker a lot of the time you're putting your hand down on the paper to draw and when you drag your hand across the marker it can get on your hand or on your sleeve so I tried to save the biggest area for last so I wouldn't have to be dragging my hand over that area every time I did other parts. I started with the parts that were more detailed that I could use my marker tip and then now I'm starting at the top and moving down so that I can um, not get the marker all over my hand and 
I'm sure you, you've experienced that before. And also, with marker, you want to start, so if you're right-handed, um, I'm sorry, then you'd start on the left and move to the right. And if you're left-handed, you'd start on the right and move to the left. So that's another way to make it so that your hand doesn't get covered in marker. Let's say you're at home and you have some markers, but some of them are running out. So you could take the markers that work and use them for the smaller details. And then if you don't have a yellow that's, that you could use for this whole thing, you could try to find something else. If you have a yellow crayon or a yellow colored pencil, or I mean, it don't, you, you don't have to be doing yellow for this, but just as an example. I know markers, a lot of the time at, at home we have markers running out. Same thing at school, they just, they don't last forever. So if you start using one medium and then you find out that you don't, some of them are not working, you can mix and use half of one and half of another. Paint would be another good one to fill in a big space like this. Watercolor have that at home. You could just get the paper wet behind in this big area and then get some yellow and paint it on or brown or orange, whatever color you're doing. Green. Something cool that I, I love about art is that I could do this and I can think of this. Just these colors, look, I've, I've mainly just thought of all these same colors for my whole thing. And you could look at this and you could think of a whole different color scheme. And they're both right. So that's, I just really like that in art. And please take, take the chance to do what, uh, what you think it should look like. Use your ideas and then you can share those too. It would be fun to see what, what you came up with. Or if you, if, the nice thing about these is if you want to just do what I'm doing as an exercise, that is great too. You can learn a lot by just following along with someone else and it can give you practice for when you want to do your own strategies another time. Do it on your own. Another time. I bet you're familiar with this technique, but I'm making sure that my lines are going the same direction instead of coloring every way making it look smooth. Marker is funny that way because you can, a lot of times you can see the lines you made. It can be hard to hide the lines. Like with crayon, you can kind of blend in an area so it's even, but with marker, you can see where the lines started and stopped, where it blended with, you know, where you overlapped lines. And so it's, uh, it's really important if you want to create a smooth texture that you use smooth lines with marker. And that, I mean, that's true of a lot of different media, whether it's watercolor or colored pencil, even crayon. Okay, and I think we're finished. So let's get this up here. Here is my desert tortoise. Uh, so if you would like to, you can take a picture and post it um, to share with me or with the class. That would be awesome. Hope you had fun thinking about desert tortoises and some science today. And we'll see you next time. Bye.